1928 Model A. Got all the zoomy go fast parts of that decade. Got all the zoomy go fast parts of the, that vintage. And we're doing some vintage leather. There's the door panels with the big stitch. Little storage compartment. And I'm going to take you into the upholstery room and show you the Gypsy Upholsterer's method of making a leather seat cover. Um, this is some pretty cool uh, leather. It's um, called the King Ranch. And it's red. Uh, we get it from Perfect Fit McDonald. So anyway, we'll go in and I'll show you kind of the layout of how we're doing it and then I'll show you some tips and tricks on actually how to make a seat cover. So those of you who have never met the Gypsy Upholsterer, this is Jim Anderson, aka Wild West Upholstery. So tell us what we're working on. Well, this is the cushion bottom for the Model A and uh, used three quarter ply and built it similar to you would a restaurant booth. I used neoprene two inch webbing that I wove in there to act as springs. Normally I would use no sag springs, but in this case we had to go with a, a real low cushion so that it would fit the right height. Then we put some foam on and uh, shaped it to the way we wanted it. Stretched a little body cloth on there so that it would hold it in place and I've marked off where I wanted to put my stitches. So these are all these marks on the side here are where all of the uh, seams and stitches are gonna go um, with the uh, perpendicular lines being the registration marks for the leather. So Jim's already gone and made um, some of the patterns um, with the registration marks all cut out on the leather. You can see how that piece will go there and Everything lines up with the, the marks so that you have a, a place to put all your seams and your parts together. Just pin them on here with uh, upholstery pins and do what I call the peekaboo method where you lift it up and you, you make your chalk marks as you see underneath there, lifting it back and forth. And then um, we sit down on the sewing machine and I'll be sewing these seams right here using the uh, larger thread so that it'll show up and then I'll switch it back to larger thread with a French seam, right? Yes. And when we say larger thread, we're talking about the high visibility thread. Um, it's, uh, we, we kind of like call it the baseball stitch, but that kind of gives you an idea of what it is. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see in action how the seat belt bottom comes together. We're going to put our French seam with the big thread in the center here on the this shoulder piece and then all along here. Uh, this, this bolster right here will just be tucked in and I'll put a piece of foam underneath there to build it up and it'll just do a roll like that. So you call that front bolster kind of a waterfall because you don't have a stitch on the front, right? Yeah, normally you would bring the boxing around on the sides like a normal truck seat. but With I, a welt or something like that, right? Correct. But back in the day, for high use, they had this waterfall technique that came around like that so that this would be a, a smoother uh, part on your legs and it wouldn't get all that wear from the welt or the seam, the stitch right there. Right. Okay. Okay, we're getting ready to sew the um, <clears throat> seat cushion cover, and uh, Jimmy's got a little trick for us. So the back side of the leather is the rough side. Um, so what he generally does, um, in order to make it slide really well on the uh, sewing table, with our Conso deep throat machine here. <laughs> He uh, just uses some newspaper underneath. And uh, we're not in the body shop. He also recommends that if you need to, you can um, put some uh, silicone spray down to make everything slide so that it, uh, it uh, moves easy. So 
Here we go. He's using actually a uh, a welt foot. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> So we're getting ready to do the uh, actual uh, flat stitch or French seam and um, a little trick here to get it to lay flatter and to make it a much nicer seam is to just spread the two pieces out and tap it with a hammer. You would not be able to do that on vinyl but with leather uh, you can it it makes that that seam lay much flatter you can see where Jim was tapping on it versus just straight sewn makes your seams look a lot nicer and anybody wondering what that is Julia's helping me out uh, <laughs> film this we have to take advantage of the uh, the upholsterer because sometimes sometimes it's hard to get him to come down here and actually get work done so we need to document it every time every time possible <laughs> That's the little uh, tail or lip of the seam. Um, so now he's just gonna let that tack off and then he'll glue it down so that he doesn't have to fight it when uh, he sews the French seam with the big stitch. The less you have to manage when you're sewing stuff like that, the better off you'll be. So you can see the tails of the uh, underside of the lips of the French seam, whatever you want to call them, um, after they've been glued. And then you can see by, by pounding it on with the hammer, uh, that is really, really flat. So that's how you make nice uh, French seams. Go ahead. So in order for the uh, French seam to not kind of stick up above the seat and have it be flat, um, <clears throat> Jim's going to uh, use a piece of headliner material and uh, attach it to the back and now he's just measuring off the um, all the different seams a lot of times when you see uh, French seams and stuff um, on a lot of leather there's a lot of material building I mean, you got multiple layers of um, stuff that's all sewn together um, and it causes those those stitches to really really stand up and so we want them to kind of sink down in and have it be a little bit flatter so we're just gonna mark them off so that they line up and then glue the material down <laughs> 